Yo, what's up guys, it's the MMA Analyst here to give you my predictions for UFC 144, Edgar vs. Henderson, taking place in uh, Saitama, Japan. Uh, before we get started, uh, shout out to Pair of Sixteens, got a couple shirts behind me right now. Let's take a look here. I would have been wearing them myself, real nice shirts to be honest, you know. Pair of Sixteens. Solid quality. Solid quality shirts. You'll see me rocking these in, in some other ones. I don't know, that one might be a little politically, you know, I don't know. Anyways, good quality, good quality, all of that good stuff. You'll see me in it later. You might only see the top half, you know, like right now. But anyways, send me a couple shirts, shout them out. And like I said, they actually have some pretty good stuff, so uh, so there you go. UFC 144, it's going to be pretty dope. On paper, it looks like it's going to be lots of exciting fights. Let's get right down to it. Frankie Edgar versus Ben Henderson. Um, a year ago, this would have been an easy pick. Uh, you know, when, remember when Ben Henderson was real smooth? That smooth Ben Henderson doesn't stand a chance against Frankie Edgar. Because Ben Henderson would be walking around, being all smooth. You know, parting his hair from his eyes and, you know, just dragging along while Frank Yeager's bouncing all over the damn place. And Frank Yeager would have just went pop, pop, you know, got in and out, in and out stuff, takedowns, got a couple of his own takedowns, probably put Ben Henderson in some submission trouble and, and won the fight pretty easily. But the Ben Henderson that's been showing up in the last few fights, the Ben Henderson that, you know, whooped on Jim Miller... You know, just beat him down. The one that whooped on Clay Guida, the one that absolutely destroyed Mark Bocek. That one could be a very big problem for Frankie Edgar. Um, the only thing, though, is in Ben Henderson's non-smoothness now, in the aggressive Ben Henderson, he still is a little too smooth. Like, Frankie Edgar's going to be bouncing all over the place. We know that. In and out, in and out. And stand-up-wise... <clears throat> Edgar's going to be, you know, much better than Ben Henderson. Maybe Ben Henderson can try and catch Frankie Edgar like he got caught in his last two fights against um, against Gray Maynard. But I don't know about all that. Um, you know, I don't see Frankie... I don't see Edgar, um, Ben Henderson countering Frankie Edgar. I can't really see Edgar making these mistakes again, coming in there, getting rocked hard and all that crazy stuff. If he does get rocked hard against... Uh, Benson Henderson, then he could get submitted. You know, forget all that ground and pound stuff. He could just grab and guillotine and end the you know end the day. But um, I don't know. I see Frankie Edgar using superior um, striking, uh, footwork, and just being just all over the place, like faster. I see him not getting caught. And when I say caught, I'm not just talking about punches. I mean. Ben Henderson's gonna have to literally grab a hold, like catch Edgar in all of this bouncing. He's gonna have to intercept one of these bounces and take him down. And then when he takes him down, he's gonna have to hold him down. Then when he's holding him down, he's gonna have to try and inflict damage and he's gonna have to do this for five rounds. He can't just win one round like that. Now, if he can do it in one round, it makes sense that he can do it in other rounds, but I don't know. I don't see that happening. I see Frankie Edgar being too fast. All over the cage, Ben Henderson trying to get inside, Frankie Edgar pointing his way, point system his way to a, to a win uh, a, a, and a decision at that, and, and that's it, you know? Um, I think it's going to be a pretty exciting fight because Ben is going to go for it, but I think uh, Frankie Edgar is just not going to get caught in really any sense of the word. And then again, if he does get caught, caught, like, you know, a hook or something like that, you know, we've seen what he can do, um, you know, facing that storm. Now, you know, Ben Henderson is a different kind of an attacker than Gray Maynard. And I'm not saying he can't finish it because Gray couldn't finish it. But at the end of the day, Frank Edgar is a tough guy. And um, I think that his speed, him being, or he is small. And I think he's a lot smaller than Ben Henderson. But I think that speed advantage and the fact that he is going to be the aggressor when it comes to moving in and moving out, I think that uh, that's going to get him the win. Probably win like at least four or five rounds. So that's how I see that. 
I will be rooting for Ben Henderson though. I think it'll be a, uh, I think it, it'll be a nice little thing if Ben Henderson can come over from the WEC and win the title. All right, next fight: Quentin Rampage Jackson versus Ryan Bader. All right, two things. Number one, I think Quentin's close to retiring. I mean, he's been close to retiring. He would have retired a long time ago if something else would have popped up. I think he did retire once, but you know, he wants to do the acting. He doesn't really like all the training. And I also think he realizes he's a little older than he wants to be. I mean, he's been fighting for a long time. I mean, he's only 33, but I mean, he's been fighting for a long time. And, um, you know, John Jones, he got his shot. I, th I, don't think, I don't think this is going to be the first step of, like, trying to get back to John Jones. I don't think that's what's happening. I think this is going to be... Quentin Rampage Jackson coming out for his fans, the guys he loves the most, the Asian fans. If you don't know, he loves the Asian fans. He didn't like what, how Pride treated him, but he loved the Asian people and the way they treated the fighters. So I think he's going to go out there for his biggest fans, and they love Rampage Jackson. I think he's going to try and go out there on some vintage Rampage, and I think he's going to go out there and get a knockout and going to retire and shed a few tears in Japan. I think that's what we're going to see. Will he come back? Yeah. You know, he's got to get paid. Um, but I think he was going to retire with a win. So, I already kind of gave away my pick. And it's obvious because Ryan Bader has nothing on Rampage Jackson. Nothing at all. He, is, he has uh, an overhand fastball pitch that I'm pretty sure Rampage could take on the chin anyways. I mean, not that most people can, but Rampage can. His wrestling... Nope, that's not going to do anything. Rampage is just too big and too strong. And Rampage's hands, and I think an aggressive Rampage. I mean, how do you beat Rampage? You get him in the clinch, right? Ryan Bader can't do that. Okay, next. You leg kick him to death. Ryan Bader can't do that. Okay, next. You, I mean, there are lots of ways. You, um, you out-wrestle him. Well, Ryan Bader definitely can't do that. You're a better striker than him. That's not Ryan Bader. You're an overall better fighter than him. That's not Ryan Bader. So what does Ryan Bader do? He goes out there and he throws wild punches, gets stuffed, and gets knocked out in Japan. That's what happens. I'm picking Quentin Rampage Jackson, second round, knockout, and a retirement speech. Next fight, Mark Hunt versus Czech Congo. If Czech Congo stays on the feet, like keeps the standing, he's going to get knocked out. Mark Hunt has got some you know, solid striking ability. His hands are good. And there's a certain thing about fighters that they, they, they have good striking and, and fighters that actually have good striking. And you can tell the ones that have good striking because they're just so comfortable on their feet. There's certain guys that'll go out there and you're like, I wonder if he's going to try and do this. That's kind of like um, Czech Congo. He's going to fight Pat Berry. Hmm, is Pat Berry going to get taken to the ground by Czech Congo? No matter who Mark Hunt fights... It's not going to the ground because of him. He's there to try and knock you out. And you're probably there to try and take him down. And that's because his stand-up is that good. And his ground game is that bad. And it's going to be hard to pick against somebody whose ground game is that bad against somebody like Czech Congo, who, in all honesty, you know, he's obviously not that great of a fighter, but he can definitely get this fight taken to the ground. And I think that's what he's going to do. I think he's going to use his wrestling... Um, Push him up against the cage, pull his you know legs out from under him, you know scoop him down to the ground, and then he gets him up against the cage, ground and pound, um, slow Mark Hunt down. If he doesn't finish him in the first round, get him tired so that he's not that overweight looking but still really fast and powerful striker come in the second round, and then probably finish uh, Mark Hunt on the ground TKO in the second round for um, Czech Congo. If Czech Congo stands with Mark Hunt, he's getting flatlined in Japan. Um, I'm going to be rooting for Mark Hunt. I, I, I would like for him to somehow pull this off, have a third straight win in the UFC. That, I mean, that would be crazy. Who would have thought? And it's not like he was completely beating bums either. Like Czech Congo, Ben Rothwell, Chris Tuchel. Okay, forget it. But, you know, the point is three wins in the UFC in a row after one, two, three, after a six-fight losing streak, including losses to Sean McCorkle, um, Gegard Mousasi, who was like a light heavyweight, 
Melvin Manhoof, who's a middleweight. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. Before that, it was Alistair Overeem, Fedor Emelianenko, and Josh Barnett. So, and that was pride and dream. So that's all right. But, um, but yeah. He got knocked out by Melvin Manhoof. This is the guy that took Krokop kicks to the dome. I'm just saying. Took it off the dome and just leaned back like Fat Joe. You know what I mean? Anyways. Check Congo. Second round. TKO ground and pound. Yoshihiro Akiyama versus Jake Shields. Um, Jake Shields is going to have to try and get a win here. He's got two losses in a row. One, just a vicious knockout to Jake Ellenberger. One, just an ugly fight against George St. Pierre. It was ugly win, ugly loss. It didn't matter. That was an ugly fight. George St. Pierre is still hurting from that one. Even that win, it, it was a bad look for George St. Pierre because people are just like, man, George, and then he's been hurt. He hasn't fought since April 2011, and it was a bad fight. And then his fight before that was a Doc Josh Koscheck. Anyways, the point is, Jake Shields got to get a win here. And he's going to try and do it in Japan against Japan's most hated, Yoshihiro Akiyama. Now, of course, everybody knows what happened. Why Japan will respect everybody and anybody but Yoshihiro Akiyama. If you don't know, let's just say Akiyama cheated against Kazushi Sakuraba. And Kazushi Sakuraba is like, that's like their Buddha. You know what I mean? Like they don't, you know, I'm just saying like they worship that dude. And he cheated and whooped his ass in the middle of cheating, so they can't stand him. Plus, I think he's like half Korean or something like that. Anyways, I'm just saying, they hate him. Whenever Akiyama fights in Japan, that's like the highest peak of, of ratings. Because everybody's like, yo, that cheating bastard's on. Yo, let's go watch and root him to lose. You know what I mean? So they can't stand him. And then he's like, all right, well, I'm out of here. I'm going to go to the UFC. Anyway, so, you know, you're probably going to hear a lot of silence for the whole thing and clapping. And you might hear a lot of boos when o Akiyama comes out. It's kind of funny. Anyways, what's going to happen in the actual fight? Uh, Jake Shields got to get this fight to the ground. I think he will be able to. But he's going to have to get Akiyama a little tired. Work him against the cage, this other stuff, blah, blah. Akiyama's got good uh, judo, so you know it's gonna be harder to take down Jake Shields. Obviously, his striking is terrible. Akiyama's striking is better, wild, and he gets tired quickly, so he gasses. Um, at the end of the day, though, I gotta go with Jake Shields. I gotta go with Jake Shields' ability to tire out Akiyama, which he's been tired every single fight. And how tired can Akiyama get? Tired enough to be submitted off. Like, from Chris leaving off his back. That's how tired Akiyama gets. So, if he can get so tired that Chris Lieben can catch him in a triangle off his back. Now, that was a brawl. And Chris Lieben brawled his way to that tiredness for, to that kind of fatigue for Akiyama. And I don't see that kind of a brawl causing that kind of fatigue from Jake Shields. But if Jake Shields can lean on him, can put him up against that cage, put play a little bit of that. I think he won't need to get much past maybe the first couple minutes of round two before Akiyama is tired enough for Jake Shields to be able to put it in the overdrive. Now, obviously it's going to be at 170. Jake Shields does not look good at 170. Akiyama, I think it's going to be his first time at 170. Or not, I mean, he's good. The point is, they're probably both going to have some issues with gas, so... Who knows? Who knows? All I know is I hope that I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that this doesn't become two grapplers sloppily striking for 15 minutes. There's a possibility for that to happen. And the kind of way Jake Shields strikes, it's not going to be an exciting sloppy brawl. It's just going to be a really boring, ugly fest. I hope that doesn't happen. I'm going to pick Jake Shields. Um... Two rounds to one decision. I think he probably loses the first round and wins the next two. Uh, Yushin Okami versus Tim Boch. Pretty simple here. Okami's better at everything except for aggression. And obviously if T Yushin Okami is better at everything, then Tim Boch is worse at everything but more aggressive. 
And uh, the main thing that Boach has is he's got that knockout power. Right? He can go in there and knock you out. He's got tons of strength. He can try and push Okami up against the cage and all that. But Okami couldn't really get moved around by Mark Munoz or Nate Marquardt. So I see the strength factor not being something that actually comes into play. But the aggression factor is serious. So Yushin Okami is going to have to use the striking which, again, he's not aggressive, so he'll be using jabs and little movements here and there. And trying to avoid Tim Boach's wild haymakers. I'm going to call it, like, you know, wrestling. I don't know what he'll call me, like, just, you know, proper wrestling and judo against, like, Tim Boach's country wrestling. Just, you know, blue-collar American, not Division One, just... Kind of like old man strength in a young man. Just, you know, that ability to just pick people up and throw them around. That's what Tim Boach has. But uh, I think I'm going to have to go with the the judo black belt. Uh, the better striking, the better at everything. And uh, and hope that he can win a fight that he really should win in Yushin Okami. Coming off of his um, beat down to Anderson Silva. But you remember that Anderson Silva fight? In every fight that he loses, he's in a situation where he needs to change things up and he just doesn't. So if Tim Boach actually comes out here and um, push, break, pushes the pace, he'll win. Like Even if he wins one round, he'll win the next two. Because if it worked in the first round, as long as Tim Boach doesn't get tired, Okami can't, doesn't, up it, like, that's it. If he's losing a fight in the first round, he's going to come out in the second round, he's going to try the exact same thing. If he loses that, he's going to come out in the third round, try the exact same thing. So if Tim Boach can figure it out in the first round, he can probably just go three rounds in a row because I don't see him getting knocked out. I don't see him getting submitted. But uh, I see, um, at the end of the day, Yushin Okami winning this fight by decision. Hatsu Hiyoki versus Bart Palaszewski. Hiyoki uh, looked terrible in his um, de UFC debut against George Root. Just absolutely terrible. He did win that fight. But, um, I mean, she, she, she couldn't get George Root to the ground. He was striking and getting hit way too much. And uh, honestly, Palaszewski, you know, lots of fights, lots of wins, lots of losses. But uh, the main thing we got to focus on here is 17 knockouts, 11 submissions. Um, definitely no bum on the ground. He's a black belt in jiu-jitsu with, uh, you know, uh, he, he trained with Jeff Curran. So he's not a clown when it comes to, you know, jiu-jitsu and whatnot. So I don't think Hioki is going to just be able to go out there and take down Palaszewski and submit him, which is what he would have to do to win. He'd also have to be aggressive. He is lacks that aggression similar to um, Okami. Palaszewski, on the other hand, very aggressive, um, well-rounded. He'll lose to, you know, a lot of the wrestlers. Uh, but a, a, I don't want to say jujitsu, but, you know, somebody like Hioki who isn't that kind of a wrestler, you know, uh, I don't think he's going to be able to pull it off. I think he's going to stay on the feet for a little too long, which is pretty much any time at all. I think he's getting knocked out. Um, so there you go. Have I picked a Japanese dude to lose yet? Yeah, I guess. Akiyama I picked him to lose. Anyways. Hioki's going to get knocked out, I think, by uh, Bart Palaszewski, who, um, like I said, he's going to be up in Hioki's face. I think he's going to be able to stuff takedowns. Um, if Hyoki can get Palaszewski on his back, then he's going to have to try and um, out-grapple him and probably try and use some ground and pound, which actually normally he doesn't do a lot of. He kind of gets it to the ground and then works for submissions. Like It's kind of like you think he was in like a Naga or, you know, I don't know, Mundials or something like that, or ADCC, because like, you would think that he's not allowed to strike on the ground, but he is. Somebody tell him you're allowed to strike, use some ground and pound. Be aggressive, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to come out there and be really, really calm and collected and get his uh, head knocked off. Next fight, Anthony Pettis versus Joe Lozon. The last one of the seven card, seven fight pay-per-view. That's on point. Anthony Pettis, Joe Lozon. This is pretty simple. Joe Lozon is an amazing first-round fighter. I think if you want to put a list of first-round fighters together... Guys, you gotta be really afraid of for the first five minutes. You gotta go um, Sokaju in his prime. Um, Joe Lozon. I don't know. Shane Carwin? I'm trying to make a. Point is, 
Joe Lozon's on that list. If he gets you in the first round, you're in trouble. If you get out of the first round, he's in trouble. And, um, you know, he's got solid jiu-jitsu, solid striking. Well, better than solid jiu-jitsu, solid striking. But he's got problems with gas. He will gas out. Once you get past that first round, you can kind of just wear him down. Anthony Pettis, you know, well-rounded fighter. Um, I don't think he's going to go out there and make dumb mistakes, you know. Like, I don't think he's going to have those Melvin Gillards, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm doing all right, I'm doing all right. Oh, that's it, right? Um, I think he'll be able to... I mean, if, if Anthony Pettis loses because of guys like Clay Guida, you know, just wears him down or oh, some kind of war with Bart Palaszewski, that's, you know, but... Like, those are the kind of fights he'll lose. Like, maybe a, a fight with, like, Jim Miller. And Jim Miller just breaks him down over a period of three, over, um, three rounds. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, solid went over Ben Henderson, Shane Roller, Danny Castillo, Jeremy Stevens. Um, I think in this fight, he's going to be able to, to get through that first round. Um, not get knocked out or submitted in the first round. And then throughout the rest of the fight, uh, you know, take it to, to Joe Lozon and win a decision over Joe Lozon. He might even finish it in the third round. Joe Lozon really does have an issue gassing. Um, then again, now that I think about it, remember those first round guys I was mentioning? So could you, Shane Carwin, Joe Lozon, they all got gas problems too. Maybe you're a first round fighter because you got problems in the second and the third round. I don't know. Maybe Monson. Anyways, I do have Anthony Pettis winning this fight. Probably uh, via uh, decision. On the undercard, Takanori Gomi, uh, Mitsuoka. It's tough to pick Takanori Gomi, to be honest. Um, he's just so one-dimensional. He can still knock you out. Like, ask Tyson Griffin if that one dimension is still dangerous. Yeah, it's still dangerous, but... I don't know. Can I pick Gomi in this fight? Mitsuoka is going to want to go out there and take the fight to the ground and, and grapple him. And just, you know, you know, just, just out grapple him. And I don't know, man. This one's tough. All right, I'm going to go with Gomi. I'm gonna go with Gomi, catching Mutsuoka and finishing him, catching him with the uppercut or something crazy. I think he can do it. I'm gonna go with Gomi. Kid Yamamoto versus Von Lee. I'm gonna go with Kid Yamamoto. Ricky Fukuda coming off of his uh, car accident uh, injury. I've got him taking out Stephen Cantwell, who. Uh, you know, you put anything in between his last name Cant and Well, you put anything in there, it's right. He can't really do much well. Uh, he shouldn't really be in the UFC anymore. Four fights, four losses in a row, and he hasn't been losing to the greatest. His last two, Mike Masenzio and Cyril Diabati. So after he loses this one, it'll be five in a row. They can't possibly keep him around. Um, I mean, the only guy they do that with is... Uh, the guy, uh, Stefan Bonner. Stefan Bonner can lose 20 in a row. But anyways, I got Mizugaki over Chris Carrizo or Carriasso. And I've got Zhang Taikan over tomorrow. So there you go. UFC 144 should be a very exciting card. If you guys want, uh, you know, start betting on MMA, you want my my picks for a month for free, hit me up. I send you some links. You guys help me out. You know, all that good stuff. All right. So there you go. MMA, it's important. Peace.